back to the channel. Now you may remember this from a few weeks ago from the video called Knobs On or Knobs Off. And as you can see, it was a case of Knobs On. Now a lot of people left comments in the section below stating that they would love to have seen this with the Knobs Off because there can be a lot of interesting colors in Monkey Puzzle around where these knots are. So what I've gone and done is I've bought another one. Now this was bought from the same seller and I'm fairly sure it's from the same tree. Uh, it's in similar condition to the other one. It's just a little bit bigger. Uh, so it's obviously from lower down the trunk. Now it's my full intention to turn this with the knobs off. But in few cases, as you can see, these holes where the knobs are goes in a fair way. So we might have to lose a lot of this round shape in the process, but we're gonna go for it and see what happens anyway. Now what I'm gonna make I have no idea yet. I'm not quite sure whether it turns into a bowl or maybe we make a pot with a lid, something like that. I'm not quite sure yet, but I think the first thing is first, let's get these nice and smooth surface to see what's underneath and then take it from there. Now, initially I'm gonna mount it between centers to get it round. That's good and tight. I'm gonna go and I'm going to go and sharpen up my ball gouge and then we'll see what we can do. I'll start off with taking these guys off and see where we go from there. Okay, so a little bit out of balance at the start. So we're going to be turning around the 600 mark. Everything's nicely secured and locked off. So we are fairly safe, but I am going to be wearing a face shield just in case. Uh, sharpened up. First order of business is knobs off. Right, glove on, that really hurt. down to the surface on all of them, which is good. Right, we're going to keep on going until we get a completely smooth surface all the way across. <laughs> That's pretty. Okay. Still not all the way around yet, but good sign of things to come. Okay, I'm going to go and sharpen up again. Still got a little way to go to get past all these. Got a fair amount of tear out. I mean, it is technically a softwood, so there's only so much you can do with softwood in terms of fine finishes, but we will do our uttermost best. So as soon as we've got this area clear and clean, then we'll make a decision on how far we go down with these. off the main body of the the piece. That's, which one's the deepest? This is the deepest crevice we have across the whole piece and that goes down about an inch. So if we were to go take this another inch down 
to get rid of all of these crevices. How would that look? Is that making it too small? I think I suppose the purpose of the video is just to see completely with knobs off. So we've done the natural one. Let's. Right, we're going down. Okay, we've got a fair way to go yet to get to the bottom of this one. As I'm going down, I'm going to still try and keep this basic shape of its natural form. I think it seems the right thing to do. Okay, as we still got one to go, don't worry about that, I'm, I'm not stopping for that reason. Just that uh, an idea suddenly occurred to me. As I'm turning this, this seems to be getting, this ridge in the middle seems to be getting narrower and narrower. And that actually might make an interesting form. If I, because of the top ones, we've cleared. Okay, theoretically we don't need to do anything much with those to get them in a condition that we need. But here, this needs to go further down. So if I only work on this side for the moment, then I don't know if you can see it. It'd be nice, kind of like a, almost like a, I don't know what kind of form that's called. We'll figure it out as we go along, but I think I know what I'm doing. Got them all. Excellent. Right, I'm just going to quickly improve this curve a little bit and then I'll try and figure out what I'm going to do up here. Okay. Right, now we've got this shape going here. We need to kind of reflect this into the top. I haven't even thought about turning this round and hollowing it out yet, but just having too much fun. Right, if I can kind of go in at a slightly deeper angle to make a small opening at the top, and then we've got a vase. I like that idea. Okay, that's what we're going to do. So I'm going to try and reflect this curve just slightly steeper on this side. flute in the top there just to see how the shape sits I'm not overly keen so I'm going to carry on going up this angle but I do like that this can go in Steeper here. keep on playing around all day until there's nothing left. So I'll stop there for a second. I'm going to create a chuck grip on the bottom. Nice big tenon, 100mm jaws. Then we'll turn it around 
and I'll do some fine tweaking of this design once we've turned around because I need to know where the base is in order to get the uh, the proportions correct. Turn this around and we will do something else to it. Okay, we've got it turned round. I was about to bring up the tail stock, but it doesn't line up with the hole that's already in the wood. So I'm just gonna make a, a jam chuck as it were with an old bit of ebony. It doesn't have to be any ebony, but it's the, the flattest, hardest wood I've got to hand. And I'm just gonna squeeze it up there. If I tried to shove this into the hole, then it would have tried to move the whole piece. And we don't want that, so that's gonna hold us nice and safe. Get as tight as I can, and then we'll lock it off. Right, I've had to mess around with this area here to see if I could figure out what kind of opening at the top would look nice. And I don't mind that shape, but I think it needs to be a lot smaller. I think we need to go in a lot narrower. So I'm gonna I'll do that now and see how it looks. finding on that edge but I think I'm happy. It's very hard to know sometimes when to stop especially when you're having fun but I think it's just come to the point where we need to stop. Shaping the outside obviously I've still got a bit of work to do but push that edge anymore until it's sanded. Right, one thing I want to do is just increase this angle here going towards the base so it's slightly more in tune with that angle. Just slightly, not a lot, just slightly. We've got to create an opening now because so we can't have a vase that you can't get anything in. Right, so I'm going to path through that while I've still got everything nice and secure, and then we're going to go in with a force of it. Deal. That's what happens when you buy cheap bits from China. No disrespect to the Chinese, they make some amazing things, but not uh, not them. I still don't have a steady rest 
all I'm going to do with the hollowing is work through two or three different Forstner bits to get the hole to about two, two and a half inches wide. And then I'm going to feather the edge to the top of the hole and in so it's a nice smooth line. And that's all we're going to do. Okay, it's time to start shaping this lip so it's a nice curve outwards. Now we're going straight into end grain here, which is quite generally difficult to hollow out. So I've sharpened up my bowl gouge, and rather than going in normally like that, I'm gonna go very much on the side. So I'm kind of cutting it with like a leading edge, so it's slicing the fibers as opposed to scraping them. going well. Because we've got right on the edge and we're, as I say, we're slicing it as opposed to scraping it, we've been left with a beautifully smooth finish. There's no tear out at all on that end grain, which is absolutely fantastic to see. All right, let's clear out that and then we'll carry on. set up for sanding. As usual, I shall let you watch a bit of it and I shall bring you back when it's all done. Absolutely wonderful. I love it. I have no idea what finish I'm going to put on it yet, but I love it. This wood is just so interesting. Right, I'm going to put a sealer on it and then we're going to cut it back with a bit of abrasive paste. So I think a blonde shellac. Actually, I'm going to brush this on. It's quite a wide uh, pore structure in Monkey Puzzle because you know it's, it's a soft wood and it will soak this up quite eagerly. I'm thinking of Danish oil again for the finish, and I've used Danish oil a few times recently, and it's good to switch up a little bit. But I did the other one. In Danish oil and it looks absolutely amazing. And I can't see any reason why this couldn't look as nice or even nicer. Already the different colours in the wood are starting to show through. That'll do that. Right, I'll let this sit for a little bit and then we'll come back and use an abrasive paste to fine up the surface and then we'll get the Danish oil out again. Okay, so plenty of time to dry. Now let's get on with the True Grit abrasive paste. Not 
Just rub this in. Now with the isopropyl, just to take off any of the excess. Okay, right, I'm going to quickly turn this around and take off the tenon, and then we shall set up for oiling. The jam chuck I usually use was just too wide to be able to get a good wedge on it, so I've just taken it down a little bit so we can get it further in. Okay, it's got a nice firm hold in it. So I can now very carefully start taking away this tenon. And saw off this last little knob and then finish the rest by hand. Okay we're all set up to put the finish on. We're using Danish oil. Now the key thing with Danish oil is that it's not a kind of a one-hit wonder. It's going to need building up in layers and each layer depending on the type of Danish oil you're using can take up to uh, 24 hours to dry. This is uh, this particular type of, from Liberons is dries in about six hours. Another key thing is that once you've put it on, you have to come back after about 20 minutes with this brand and wipe off any excess. If you don't wipe off, off excess, then the layer starts to get sticky. So I just put that layer of shellac on before we hit it with an abrasive paste. It's just helped us keep the colour with the previous piece. I put the, I didn't use shellac at all. I just went straight onto the raw wood and that darkened it a lot. But here it's looking absolutely amazing. Now I think this is probably going to take eight, seven or eight coats before it's done. So I'm going to get on with this and I shall bring you back when it's all finished. Between each coat, by the way, I am going to be rubbing it down with a bit of wire wool. Last thing to mention with the Danish oil is that it does have tendency to spontaneously combust with an exothermic reaction. So any cloths or rags you use with it, please dispose them carefully after each use. You can just put them in water, shove them outside, just keep them away from anything else that can catch fire. It doesn't often happen, but it is a possibility and it has happened. Okay, I'm gonna carry on doing the, all the inside bits. I'll see you when it's all done. And there we go. Six to seven coats of Danish oil later. We've got a rather beautiful piece of monkey puzzle formed into a vase. Uh, you'd be glad to know I've just ordered a steady rest which has been specifically made for this lathe and that should be ready hopefully 
by the end of the month so hopefully we can start doing some hollowing properly rather than what we have although it does have a, a very good use now because it is still quite a robust piece uh, you can put long stems in it and there's no chance of it toppling over it really is quite magnificent uh, i'm glad i decided to get another piece of monkey puzzle uh, to try it with the the knobs off because the grain pattern around these areas is just absolutely stunning and if you see these black dots we have then uh, if you look at uh, photos of a monkey puzzle tree you'll see it has kind of like sharp frongs coming off from the bark and i think this is where they grow from so it really is quite fascinating anyway i hope you've enjoyed this video it's certainly been a very fun one to do i've kind of let myself go with this one and just carried on playing with it until i got something i felt was a nice form now, anyway if you have enjoyed it i would really appreciate the thumbs up and a subscribe and stuff like that and if you leave a comment as well then you will be entered into the next giveaway uh, i haven't quite decided exactly on the date yet but whenever it is then you will be entered but apart from that thank you very much indeed for watching and i'll see you next time thank you